Um, again, this is where one of the things that uh, comes down to, to playing. If you go to formulas and you look at uh, this function library, there are literally hundreds of functions in Excel. I'm, I'm not going to cover them all. But I do encourage you to understand some average rank um, count. Um, those are all very important functions um, for the exam. Um, and as you go through your time in the business school, you'll learn all sorts of fun functions. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some advanced functions in just a little bit, but let's take a break. Let's take that 15 minute break right now. Um, and once we get back, we'll start on advanced functions. So it is 310 right now. Let's take a 10 minute break. Let's, let's come back at 320, okay? All right, we've got about an hour, hour and 10 minutes left, hopefully. Um, and, but the, co the, the concepts are going to get a little bit more complicated here. So again, if you, you, you get lost, please don't hesitate to raise your hand and I'll come by and try to help you out. Um, while we were talking about cell references, um, those, are, those are traditionally going to be about like 98% of the types of references that you're going to do in Excel, but sometimes or you might be asked to make a structured reference. And with that, that, that is a specific reference that happens when you're in a, a, uh, in a table. Um, a formatted table in, in Excel. So this is a different, so I went, this is in a different worksheet. And just watch, you don't have to do this one. But watch when I create my subtotal here. Watch what, watch, look at my references up here. So instead of being a cell reference, it's a structured reference, and that's designated here. And so instead of this being E4 times D4, it's number of items here times item cost here. Okay, and it just automatically copies that formula down for me. Okay, that's something that's built into the table functionality in Excel, and it's known as a structured reference. Um, I just wanted to mention that because it's important to know for the exam, okay? So that's a structured re reference. Okay, sometimes um, you may get an error message. So let's say I do um, equals this times that. I'm going to get an error message. Now, each error message has, there's a list of error messages in your handout. So if you open up your handout to page two or three, you'll see the seven most common error messages. Know all of these error messages. I'm not going to have time today to go over all of them, but know um, what div over zero means. It means that you're trying to divide by zero. NA means value not available, okay? Same thing with all of them. Just know what each one of those means. Um, that's also important for the exam, okay? It's sort of the only, like, memorization thing that I have for you. Okay. Now let's go on to advanced functions. This is where I think I'm a pretty big geek, so I put that as a disclaimer, but I think this is where Excel gets a lot of fun. Um... I already have that. Okay, so advanced functions. Let's open up the if uh, if function worksheet. Okay, similar thing. Uh, sales sheet. This is just a little bit longer, right? We've got um, more 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 sales. Um, what we want to do here is that we want to for shipping. We want to create a formula that says, um, just like in Amazon, right? Like if you spend less than, what, $35, you're charged with shipping if you don't have Prime. Um, but if you spend more than $35, it's free, right? So let's make a, 
uh, let's write some code here. Let's exit that out. And let's write a code here that says if, um, if our subtotal is greater than, I don't know, 500, then shipping is free. Otherwise, make the shipping cost uh, 2%. Okay, so that's what, that's what our task is here. And to do that kind of logic, right, we're doing some, some, some we're programming some logic into this, this, this function. The function that we use is if. So we type equals if, if, now we need a logical test. We want to say if this, if f4 is greater than, so let's, let's, let's do that, if f4 is greater than, everybody knows what the greater and so, sign is, right? <laughs> is greater than what, what, what value did I say? 500. Then, that then is a comma. Then, return this value. And we want it to be free, so it's going to be zero. Otherwise, that's a comma, return this value. And what, did, what, what value did we say? 2% of subtotal, so it's going to be F4 times 0 0.02. And then we'll close up with our parentheses and equals. Okay? So, yeah. So there's three values here, right? We've got the logical test, we've got the value if it's true, and then we've got the value if it's false. And we're separating those by commas. Okay? And sure enough, for shipping to zero, let's copy that down. Uh-oh. What did I do wrong here? I oh, know I did that right. Yeah. Copy it all the way. Yep. Is there a fast way to do it all the way? Yeah, you just double click on that green button. <coughs> do you have that green dot right there? You double click on that green dot. Another way of doing this is if you click shift end, or actually if you're on a laptop you may not have that, but shift end down. But well. Shift and down will highlight that whole range. That's a keyboard shortcut you don't need to know. Okay. Okay, now I'm feeling a little bit more stingy. I actually need to charge for shipping if uh, my subtotal, I still want to keep my 2% for my customers that are paying less than $500. But I want to charge a 1% shipping fee for anybody between um, $500 and $1,000. Okay? How can I do that? So what? So we're, we've got two conditions. We've got if uh, subtotal is greater than $500, charge them 2%. If um, subtotal is between five hundred and a thousand dollars. Charge them one percent. How do we programmatically do that in this one cell? You can embed functions within functions. So here, instead of having my if value be a formula. Let's just put in another function. <coughs> if f4 is, um, in this case, less than, oh wait, yeah, is less than a thousand, then make it f4 times 0 0.1. Otherwise, make it F 
No, I think I did this wrong, but let's see. <clears throat> Two. So for that false value argument, we're actually giving it another if statement. See if that worked. And it didn't. Yeah, I think I I think I wrote the logic wrong. Yeah. How did I why did why did I write that 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 wrong based on this? Anybody want to troubleshoot the instructor? So just read it out, right? If F4 is greater than 500, then, then put zero. Otherwise, do this. So where should I put that if statement? Yeah, I should have done the second one in the true value. Right, because we're evaluating values over 500. So let's redo this. So if F4 is greater than 500 and if F4 is less than 1,000, then do F4 times 1%. Otherwise, Zero. Okay. It is not working right. Okay. And this is F four times zero point. Is there a zero after what? No. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. If let's let's do this. If F four is less than, let's do greater than. If it's greater than. 500, then it's free. Otherwise, we wanted to make it 2%, right? But instead, we're going to do if F4 is what, what was it? It's less than 1,000. Then do F four times. Otherwise, do F four times. Two. Okay. Okay. No, it should be. Let's do something that's let's do something that's easier than this. Okay. <laughs> if F four, then we're going to make this is greater than then shipping is going to be free. Otherwise, it's going to be F five times two. Let's get back to the basics here. Why do you think F five? I just, it, that's where I was. I'm going to copy it back up. Okay. Now, instead of Okay. I'm going to get this if it kills me.
Would this still be on test? Or? Yes. So if F4 is greater than 1,000, then, wait, no, that's not right. There we go. Here we go. I got it. We do the larger value first. That's what I was doing wrong. If that equals that, then F4 times F2. Otherwise, F4. There we go. Okay. I'm sorry. It's Friday afternoon. My head's not working. But this is right. So if okay, but you're trying to do values between five hundred and one thousand. Yeah. That's just not coming out right. This work. So I just did. So if you click on that, I did. If it's less than 500, it's you. It's like a yeah. sort of like a no hypothesis. Yeah. So if it's less than 500, it's zero. And if it's not, it'll do the next if statement. Yeah. And consider if it's less than. Does this work? Um, so if it's less than a thousand. Yeah. I think that should work. But that's just going to give me the 2% value. Yeah. No, I think that's still wrong. Okay. The moral of the story is that logic, embedded logic, can get complicated very fast. Um, but the but the most important thing for you to know here is like I made, I, I made the, my life really difficult by, by having you do, do that. But the most important thing here is to know that you can embed a function within a function. Okay? So that instead of just returning a value here or a reference, I can return a, uh, a, a function. So I could do sum um, item cost and E. Okay. So I have, instead of just a cell reference or a um, number, I can actually put in, I can embed a function inside of a function. Yeah. Is function you have to put No. No. Okay. All right, let's do something a little bit easier. Let's go to count f. The worksheet count f here. <clears throat> All right, so what we want to do, this is a this again is a is a sale a shale, a, a sales sheet. Um, and what we want to do over here is we want to count the number of rows, the number of items that are from the kitchen department. Okay? So to do that, we're going to do it equals count if, and it requires two, uh, two arguments, a range and a criteria. Okay, what is our range going to be in this case? So we're going to look up kitchen in a range. Where, where would we find kitchen? In department, right? So let's, our range is going to be B, so select B comma, and what's our criteria? Kitchen. Perfect. No, the, you want to do a reference to J4. Yeah. 
Which one? Absolute. <laughs> so the range, you don't need to make the range absolute here, because the range is, I highlighted the entire column. You see, it's B to B. I don't need to actually, I didn't state any rows. I just said B. Can you just repeat how to do that one more time? Yeah. So you, we're going to call the F, we're going to call the count if function. And we're going to, it requires two our, our arguments, a range. So a range over some rows. And the value in which we want to count over that range. So we're counting the number of rows in B in, in the column B that say kitchen. So one, two, three, and so on and so forth. And that's what's happening here. And as we go down here, we're saying, okay, count the number of bedroom rows. Count the number of living room rows. Okay. Okay, so for revenue, we want to sum the revenue for all of the rows that, ha that are from the kitchen department. What function do you think we should call here? Sum if, exactly. So sum if, what is our range? No. So this requires three our, our arguments. The range in which we're going to look up, which is going to be, again, B. Our criteria, which is going to be J4. And then we have a sum range. What is the sum range? H. Perfect. And let's copy that down. All right, what about this one? Average cost per item. Exactly, average if. So equals average if. Again, we have a range. A range is going to be B. Our criteria will be department, or J4. And what is our average range in this case? What are we going to average across? Average cost per item. What column is that? F, F right, price. Awesome. So what, what, what department has the highest average cost per item? The living room. Exactly. What does it mean when it says cells doesn't recognize Well, look it up on your uh, little table here. It says cell doesn't recognize the name. So what most likely you, your reference is wrong. Okay, so we've talked about if, yeah, question? You're dividing by zero? Okay, so we've talked about a couple of functions. The if function, what does if do? It allows you to create a logical, some logical conditions. If this is true, show this. If it doesn't, show that. Okay. Then there's also count if, sum if, and average if that you can leverage. And probably the most um, powerful function of all is VLOOKUP. Has anybody used VLOOKUP before? Yeah? Okay. So there's VLOOKUP and, and HLOOKUP, but most likely you're going to use VLOOKUP. And what it does is it says, okay, I've got two, two sets of data. Okay. I've got table A, which we're going to call this table A, and we're going to call this table B. And what I want to do is I want to 
look up a value in table B and return it to table A. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to look up our subtotal and say, what is our price reduction for this dollar amount? We'll look over here at the table and say, okay, so for our 0 to 500 is 0 is 0%, 500 to 1,000 is 2%, so on and so forth. So well, what it's going to do is it's going to look up to this table and return the correct percentage reduction. Okay. So let's let's do that. So we're going to do equals v lookup. What is our lookup value? What's d2? Okay. And then it's saying table array. What is our table array? Where are we going to look up that value? But in the table, but that table is an array, and we have to reference that array. So to do that, we're going to highlight that reference. So h1 to i7, that's our table array. Okay. Now it's asking for a column index number. So it's saying, okay, I'm gonna. I looked it up. I found it. It's between these two numbers. Now what do you want me to return? I want to return the second column. Right? Because in this array, this is the second column. So we'll do a 2 and equals. And there it returned that 6%. Put it down. What did I do wrong? Yeah, I didn't make my reference absolute, so let's go back here. Make that absolute, and then copy and paste it down. So that gives us the price reduction that's associated with this subtotal. Okay? Now there's two ways of doing a VLOOKUP. There's an approximate max, so that when I look up the value, I can say, is this value exactly like this one? If so, return a value. Or is this value approximately like this value, then return a number? This is an approximate V lookup, okay? Because we're looking at, at ranges, right? Anything over 20, anything over these values is going to return the percentage, right? But sometimes we want it to be an exact one. So let's go to the exact V lookup worksheet. And so for here, we've got two tables, right? We've got our product line revenue, and then we also have sort of the categories, the home, and the products here. So this is all of our products, the department that those products are in, and the categories uh, that, 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 that they're in. And what we want to do is we want to, for our price list, or for, yeah, for our price list over here, our revenue, we want to fill in our department and category. Okay, so we're going to do a VLOOKUP. So we're going to do equals VLOOKUP. What are we going to look up in this, this department category? What is the common thing between these two tables? What? Product, exactly. So product, A3. We want to look that up in this table, which is going to be K. I'm just going to highlight the, the whole thing. K through M. And then for this one, what is our column index number? Yeah. Two, because we want to return the department. Yep, yeah, exactly. Now this is where we where's another R, R argument we want to do because we want this to be an exact match. And if we put true here, then it's going to do an approximate match. That's the default. But what we want here is an exact match. So we're going to put in false.
and it returned furniture. And is that right? Bamboo armchair, I'm sure, is a furniture. And let's copy that down. What happened here? You have bonus points if you figure this out. What happened here? What do you mean by spaces? The what? Yeah, so whoever entered in this row put two spaces in between side and chair. And because we did it in an exact match, it's returning as saying, hey, that value is not available because I don't see that product in this table. Okay? One of the things that we can do to fix this is, again, we can embed a function in a function. And there's a function called trim. What do you think trim does? It trims the fat, right? It trims things that are excess. So if you have too many spaces, it'll trim that out. So what we did was we put the trim function on our lookup value, A3, and copied it down. That cuts out that space automatically for us. I want you to do I, the column I now. All right, so what do we do here? Can anybody walk, 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 walk me through this? So equals VLOOKUP. What is my lookup value? A3. What is my table? K through M. What is the column? Three, right? That's because we want the one, two, three category. And then my range, do I want an exact match or an approximate? Exact. Copy that down. Same thing. We want to call that trim in here. So a word about parentheses. When you call a function, you're going to have a parentheses and then your arguments. You have to close that parentheses in order for um, other things to happen. Okay. So I want to close that parentheses and copy it down. Perfect. Okay. Any questions about VLOOKUP? This is a really commonly used function, and it will definitely be on, on the exam. And really, its functionality comes from having two different data sets, two different databases, right, and using the function to use a, a value and look it up on another uh, table, okay? All right. So those are advanced functions. Now let's do some data viz. So let's close this file out and go to data analysis and visualizations. Okay. All right, so sometimes what we want to do is for, so in this example, say I'm a mortgage broker, and I am preparing some, some documentation for prospective home buyers, and they want to know um, what, their down, what, what, their, um, what their mortgage is going to be based on the sale of the home, the sales price, which is here, and the rate of the mortgage. Um, then it's a pretty complicated formula or function, and we could, cut, and it would be the function, the the yeah, the, the formula is more complicated than something that I could just write in to each one of these cells and copy and paste it down. But what I want to be able to do is I want to actually write the function, and this is this is what the formula looks like. It's payment um, with 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 what the formula inside of there. And I want to say, I want to add these values to that func to that, that, that formula and have it across this entire table. And there's a way of doing this that's relatively easy, which is I'm going to write 
my function, and then I'm going to write out the values that I want to give that function and create a table, and then I'm going to highlight that table. Okay? And I'm going to data, and what if analysis, and do a data table. And it's going to ask me for a row input. My row input is going to be um, what's on this row, which is going to be 3%. It's going to be the percentage. My column input is going to be the down payment. Oop, sorry. And what that does is it automatically fills in this table using this function and formula. Yeah. So row is going to be percentage. So it's going to be B1. And then the column is going to be the down payment, which is 200000 or B2. So know how to create. You, you're, you're not going to need to actually create the table, like the, the, the header and the, the row uh, and the down payment. But you're going to need to know how to go into what if analysis, create a data table, and know which row and which column to input. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to select it, go to what if analysis, stable data table. Row input is going to be the percentage, B1. Column input is going to be down payment. And then I'm just going to do OK. Row input is B1, column input is B2. Yeah. Yours is not working? Did you highlight the table? You highlighted everything. You only want to highlight B3. Okay. All right. So that's data table. Now we'll do a pivot table. How many people have created a pivot table before? Yeah? One? Cool. Okay. So pivot tables are also something that is very, very functional in, in Excel. Say what we, this is, this looks familiar, right? This is our uh, HR uh, employee sheet, right? Where we've got salaries and buildings. Say what we want to do is we want to create some summaries. We want to show the, the total amount of or the average salary for uh, individuals in our departments, right? We want to collapse this data and summarize it um, in a way that doesn't require us to do a lot of functions and formulas and new worksheets, okay? And pivot tables let us do that really e easily. To, so to create a pivot table, we're going to highlight our data. So A to J, go to insert and do pivot table. It's going to say, what is your range? We've already selected it. Where do you want it? I'm going to do an existing worksheet, and I'm going to do K3. I want it to be inside this worksheet. OK? Everybody got there? So I highlighted the table. I went to insert pivot table. My range is pivot table to A to J. And I want to put this pivot table in K3. What? Uh, down here? Don't worry about this. It's K3. 
well, it's pivot table exclamation point dollar sign k dollar sign three. <coughs> Got it. Okay. So then it comes up with this, and it says, hey, I see that you have these different fields. These fields are represented by the headers in the table, right? And what I can do is I can create my, my own, my, my new pivot table. And what did I say? I, I said I wanted to look at the average salary for each of the departments. So we want to pull in department to rows. So I'm just going to drag department to rows. And there are all of our departments. And then I want to drag salary to values. So this is our first pivot table. What, it, what value is it giving me? The count, what does that mean? Yeah, so it's just counting the rows, right? So it says we've got 151 employees in manufacturing. That's not what we, what we want, yeah. Well, well, you'll get that. We're getting there. So the default on PC is count. The default on Max may be sum. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on this down arrow down, down here and go to value field settings. And we want to summarize not by count, but what do we want to summarize by? Average. Now it's giving us the average. Let's format this to dollars so it makes more sense. There we go. So now we're, these are the average salaries for these different departments. Make sense? Yeah. So if you highlight G L and change it to dollars, try that. Okay, and say we want to sort this by salary. What we're going to do is we're going to click this down arrow on row labels and do more sort. And we're going to sort ascending by, not department, by average salary. And that's going to sort it. That's interesting. It's going to sort it by salary. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Say we want to. Um, it doesn't matter. Just I want you to know how to do that. Okay. Let's go back into this. Um, say I want to add a column here. I want to get a little bit more uh, in depth here, and I want to um, have my column. I want to create a filter here. So I want to put in higher date to filter, and I want to say I only want to look at. Um, actually, let's not do higher date because that's more complicated. Let's do years. So now it puts this years up here as a filter and I can filter say I only want to look at people that were in the company between six and ten years. So I'm just going to highlight those. And I'm going to filter for just those employees. That then creates the average salary for employees from this department that have only been employed between six and ten years. Okay, so you can use filters and pivot tables as well. Um, so that is how to add pivot tables. Now let's see. Then we want to put in higher date into our column. What happened when we pulled in hot, 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 higher date? What are our columns here? It automatically recognized that that higher date was a date value. 
and it's giving us a bunch of options here. It's saying we have years, we have quarters, and we have the higher date. Say we only want to look at the quarter in which they were hired, what we can do is we can remove the year value. Now we're only looking at the quarter. So now what we're looking at here is people that were hired in the first quarter from the various departments have this average salary. Okay? And it can get even more complicated, but understand that the date fields, when you pull in dates into a pivot ta ta table, have what's known as drill down values. You can go from year to quarter to month to day. Okay? Okay. All right. Um, is there anything? Does anybody have any questions about pivot tables? You guys good? Yeah? Okay. Let's talk about charts. First chart I want to talk about is a sparkline. Has anybody done a sparkline before? No? So a sparkline, what it does is it, it will create a little tiny line chart in a cell for you based on a range of cells um, that you give it. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the range in which we want to take a, create a spark line for. Hi, hi, highlight that range. Go to Insert. Wait. I always forget where spark lines are because I've never actually done a spark line before. Here it is, yeah. So we're going to highlight that range and we're going to choose a line. You can either do a line or a column. And it's going to say, what is our data range? We want B to K. And where is our, our uh, spark line going to be placed? Let's do it in column L. Oh, I shouldn't. This is going to crash. Don't do that. We might have to reopen this. I've been denied. So restart Excel, it's going to crash on you. Just close it and open it. So the mistake that we made there was we highlighted the entire column as opposed to just the, the, the table itself. Um, and so it's trying to create spark lines on millions of rows as opposed to just nine. So restart Excel. And once you're there, no, we don't need that. And our range is just going to be L2 to L8. So really quickly from this, the spark line, what can you say about the data? Like what is, this is, this is population. <laughs> data across time for these different areas. What does is, what is the population do over time? It increases, right? Um, pretty self-explanatory. But that's how you create a spark line. You highlight a range and you give it a range for it to, 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 to go into. Okay? Okay. So for a chart, a chart is something different. It's, it's, it is going to um, not just be put into a specific cell, but it's going to be a much larger visualization. So for this, you do want to select A1 to K8, that range, right? Because we want the dates and we want the, the, the countries to be put into there. And we're going to do insert, and what kind of chart do we want to make? There's all sorts of different charts that you can make. Um, I'm going to make a line chart, a 2D line chart. And this first option here. And what did it do here? It took the um, the years, 
okay, and put them onto the x-axis, and it took the values of each one of the, the, the population and put it onto the y-axis, and then it created a, a line for each one of the countries, and it represented those countries by a color, okay? Now, if I want to go in, so this is really informative for us to see the population growth in North America, United, the United States, and Mexico, and maybe Canada, but it's not really that great at seeing Bermuda, Greenland, and St. Pierre, right? Because it's so small. Like, it just, you can't see it on the axis. So I want to go in and only select the smaller countries. So I'm going to right-click on the body of this chart and do Select Data. And I'm going to uncheck the larger countries. And I'm only going to have St. Pierre, Greenland, and Bermuda selected. And that changes the data that, that, that we see. Now, if I want to go in here and change my axis, the options are for the axis, the Y axis, I'm going to double click on it. And let's say I want to make my maximum 0.1. And I want to make the major distinguishing, instead of being 0.01 separation here, I want it to be 0.02. And maybe I want to have the number be in mm, number. Again, these are the formatting options that we covered before, but instead of, act, uh, of ac accessing them through the ribbon, we're accessing them through this side. Okay? Um, and then we can do all sorts of things like reverse the order, we can change the tick marks, we can change the labels. Um, all of that information is accessed from here. Another thing that we could do is let's say we want to add a, uh, a um, access label. So we're going to do add chart elements up here in the top left hand corner. We're going to do an access title for the vertical, the Y axis. I'm going to change that to population. Okay? That's how you add that. <coughs> yep. So that's how you make a basic chart. Now again, there are a lot of different chart types. You should uh, you should know what the the uh, generally what are the more major chart types. So if you look at like a bar chart, um, a line chart, not really so much a pie chart, but uh, but but make a few bar charts and line charts from the exercises, and it'll be good practice. Change and format the axis titles. Uh, change the range and the scale that you're presenting with those access titles. Um, and we can also double click the chart and we can name this uh, population. Okay? Okay. That's how you make charts. All right. How are you guys feeling? Did everybody make a chart? Yeah? Okay. So the visualizations that we've covered are charts, spark lines, pivot tables, data tables. Um, did I miss anything? Okay. The last thing we're going to talk about is printing. And we're going to open up examples. And go over here to print. How many people have printed from Excel before? It's kind of a pain, right? Um, if I just printed this without doing anything, what happens? 
I end up with my the width of my table is wider than the actual page. So I end up with two pages, and this page in particular is worthless, right? Because I don't know what products this the this this um these columns refer to. So what I want to do is I want to make this worksheet print on a single page. So to do that, how did that happen? So to do that, I'm going to select the area that I want to print. I'm going to go to page layout and I'm going to do width one page. Okay, so I'm saying print this within one page width wise. Then I'm also going to do set print area. Okay, now if we go to file and print, it's all on a single page. Does that make sense? That's the highlighter, right? The whole thing. Yep, you have to highlight the area, the the columns and the rows that you want to print. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So there's two things that we did there. We did print set area, or print area set area, set print area, and then we also changed the scale to fit to one page. Okay. Okay. We also want to do. Let's say we want to print a header. Okay, let's say we want we're printing this and we want to give it a title. We want to say who 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 created this. So we're going to do we're going to highlight both the uh, um well, actually we're going to go into file. And, <coughs> wait. Oh, wait. Oh. Okay, so we're going to remember how we could have the different views down here in the bottom right. The normal view is this grid, but if we go to page layout, it's going to take us to this view. We can double click that header and let's just give it a, uh, uh, a header. So um, product list. And then I'm going to put my name and. <coughs> The date. Can you just go back to that one again? I tried to just get it from the. I tried to get it to that layer of all the white that I have. It's down here. Okay. Oh, to click this one. Right. And again, here, what you can do is you can format this. So you can make it bold. You can change the, 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 the font color. And then you can even like put in a page number. So I'm going to click on this column right here and do page number. So if I have multiple pages, it's going to print the page number that's correct. That's helpful, you know, if you're printing out six pages of spreadsheet, it's helpful. Um, you can also like left and right justify this. So let's say I want this to be, or maybe you can't. It's got to be centered then. Okay. Okay. So that's how you had it added a header. So with printing, what's important is to be able to scale it so that it prints on a single page, know how to set the print area, and then also how to go in and add a header and format that header for printing. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go back to that worksheet that I handed out. Just to review, we've talked we talked about what is Excel, what is it, what exactly is Excel, what does it do? Data. It's data, right? It is a database. It stores data. You can manage data inside that database. It also, what else does Excel do? Format. You can format. Yep. You can format. You can also 
manipulate your, your data. You can create new calculations. You can create new rows. Um, you can also export, right? You can print. Um, we talked about the different data management things. Uh, you can sort, you can filter. Um, remember that text to columns function uh, where you separate a column based on a delimiter or a space. Um, we went over the many, many, many types of formattings that you can do. Go in and play around with the different types of number formats. There's a lot more than, than what we covered t today. So when you go in, um, play around with the different date formats, with the different <laughs> currency formats. Um, know how to format a table, right? That's how, what, what we did at the very beginning. Know that when you format a table, it automatically switches from cell references to structured references. Just know that that happens. Um, and then know the difference between a relative cell reference and an absolute re reference. That is an essential skill and knowledge, not only for the exam, but also just as you move forward in Excel. The more you understand the difference between relative and absolute references, the better you're off you're going to be. We covered a lot of functions and formulas. What's the difference between a function and a formula? Anybody? Yeah, so a formula is a uh, is a, a series of um, mathematical operations that you do to sell references. A function is a built-in formula, right? And the example that we used was sum, right? We could say equal, this cell is going to be equals to this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this. Or what we can do is we can just call the sum function and highlight that range, and then it's going to add all of those things together, right? So a function is a built-in formula in Excel. Um, and we covered a, a, a bunch of them. Know those error me messages that's in that table and that handout. That's going to be really important. Um, and then know the advanced functions. That, that if statements, I'm sorry, I totally had a brain fart on that embedded uh, if statement, but know your if statements, know your count ifs, your sum ifs, your average ifs. Um, understand that you need to pass them. They, each function requires a unique um, number of arguments. So sum only requires one, whereas if requires three. Right? And none, understand what each one of those things are. Um, then obviously understand what VLOOKUP does. And then in data visualization and data analysis, that's going to be where your pivot tables come in, your data tables going to come in. And understand the difference between a data table and formatting a table. Those are two different things. Data table is going to be an analysis. Uh, a data table is going to be more for function. I mean, and a table is more for formatting. Okay? And we talked about spark lines and charts and printing. Um, if you uh, are taking the exam next, next week and are wanting to get extra practice, I have exercises here on the back that I highly encourage you to, to do. Um, they are based on some of the um, it's based on a file that's in that folder that I gave you. Um, run through those. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email is abel4 at richmond.edu. Um, I'm available for most of the workday, but if you have any questions or want some help on a specific problem after hours, you can go to the tlc.richmond.edu. Um, dot edu and schedule an appointment with um, them in the TLC. They, they, it's student staff um, and they are experts in Excel and they'll be able to answer any, any of your questions. And just as a reminder, you get three chances at this exam. Um, I do encourage you to take it as soon as you can. You may not pass, but at least you'll get a sense of what the exam looks like.
Because um, the exam is very uh, uh, um, rigorous. It is, it is challenging. Um, but you have three opportunities to take it. So don't feel like you have to take it the first time and pass it. Yeah. Um, you mean like how long will it take? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but it's pretty long. Yeah. Pretty comprehensive. What? I don't know. I, I think you, the rule is now, it, this is new, right? Like it's this new thing where you have to pass the exam in order to get into the business school. Um, and I don't know the answer to the question if you don't pass. Um, but most people that have taken it once will pass it on the second time. I'll just, that's, that's what I've heard. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for your attention. <laughs>